for anybody watching right now who is new to our programming or anything like that, I just want to remind everybody that you can sign up for all of our future programming at, the, at our website, southamptonhistory.org slash calendar. You can scroll down through the list of all of our upcoming programs and RCP for anything you might be interested in. We have all sorts of different programs every week. Um, and this week, it, our Thursday program is Cooking with the Countess. Um, what we have here is Mrs. Som, the Countess, and her chef, Brian Hetrick. Um, what they're going to be doing today is discussing how to make a really great, interesting recipe using rhubarb. So what I'm going to do is throw it basically over to them. They're going to take over from here and bring you all through this really interesting journey. So uh, Brian, Mrs. Som, enjoy. Okay. Thank you, Connor, and welcome, everybody. Uh, we're at the Port of the Missing Man. What's that? The Port of Missing Men, not the Port of the oh, Missing Men. Port of Missing Men. Okay. Missing <laughs> Thank you. And I'm Brian Hetrick, and this is the Countess. And we're going to be making a really, really fun and delicious rhubarb compote and with a vanilla sauce. And this compote you can actually put inside of custard caps, or you can actually put it inside of a pie crust if you wanted to. Now, rhubarb is a really, really interesting plant. Uh, so most people don't know what to do with it. Um, basically, rhubarb looks a bit like celery, uh, but it has a lot of nutrients in it. So rhubarb is very high in vitamin A. It's also high in potassium and other minerals, but it's also high in a very interesting nutrient called vitamin K, which is really, really important for cardiovascular health. So let's get started. We're going to begin by making the rhubarb compote. And today I'm just going to be the, um, a little bit lower, yeah, a little bit more. There we go, okay. Today, this is actually the Countess's recipe. So she's gonna be doing all of the food preparation. I'm just kind of like the, the sous chef or the assistant. So Countess, I'm curious, have any men gone missing recently here? It's too much of a story. Okay. <laughs> we'll tell that story next time. <laughs> well, I've heard of Henry VIII, but I haven't heard of June the 4th. But anyway, so um, tell us what we're I'm, doing I'm, here. I'm just cleaning up the rhubarb. You saw how it comes out of the garden, which is important. And uh, this is this is the part that is close to the roots. The the white part. And yeah, and some okay. people cut that off because they don't know. And, and this is really a good part. Oh, so this is like the tenderloin of the rhubarb. Yeah. This little white tip. So we did a video on gardening with the countess. It's on YouTube. It's also on the Southampton Historical Museum website. And uh, you can go back and you can refer to that the proper way to harvest rhubarb. Uh, rhubarb is a uh, needs really really cold winters in order to grow so it's perfect here in Southampton or near Southampton where we are. So what are we doing now Countess? You so I cut it in sort of almost inch size pieces. Okay. And, and I, I just really wanted to demonstrate how to harvest it. You saw on that on that video you have to with both hands Yank it out. Okay, so you don't use a knife or scissors. No. You just use your hands. You, you have to yank okay. it out from underneath the, the plant. Okay. And the leaves, you have to break it off because the leaves are, are toxic. Right. You don't want to get them into the food. Okay. Somehow. And you yank it out, so this is intact, and then you have to clean it up a little bit. And, and that's what I'm doing here, just a little bit because it has some, some soil on it, maybe. So for those of you who don't know, the Countess is really, really talented in many, many different areas. I'm told but I she... don't overdo it. <laughs> You're supposed to do the smiling. Okay. <laughs> I'll do the smiling. <laughs> and you do the chopping. Okay. But well, you can do some chopping. Oh, sure. Okay. I'll help out then. And, and this is sort of basically the size that I want. Now, there are some people who really don't know what they're doing. They think that this has to be peeled. Mm -hmm. And that's a great mistake mm -hmm. because because rhubarb you can eat absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. and everything is tasty. And the peelings, uh, what do we do with those? Are we composting those? Yes. Oh, okay. Awesome. So. Just really well, stay tuned. You, you can just take a bunch and, 
I'm just cutting it sort of and it, it should go up gotcha. quite quickly. Well, stay tuned for a future episode on how to do composting in gardening greenhouses as well. So we have a beautiful garden here at Port of the Missing Men. And uh, the Port of Missing Men. The Port of Missing Men. Not Port of the Missing Men, that's one. Gotcha. <laughs> Now all this puzzle ends where the leaf falls, just to cut that off. So and Countess it goes into the green. I noticed the Countess has a, a tin that she keeps in the kitchen at all times for compost. So everything is used here. And how much rhubarb do we need for this recipe, Countess? Well, I mean, uh, um, it, 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 it gets kind of soft, soft when it's cooked. I mean, some people, they like to mix it with strawberries. I, 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 then it's not rhubarb pie anymore, then it is a bastardized something. Like that, you know. Okay, so we're making a true rhubarb pie yes. today. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yes. And, uh, and do we toss them in this bowl here after we've cut it? You have to cut them smaller, okay? Oh, okay. Like that. All right. And, and uh, I'll show you in a minute in on my secrets of what to put in to season this. Oh, good. Okay, I can't wait. So this is a new recipe for me as well. So I'm learning along with uh, everybody else there today. So Brian, I have a question from the audience. Yes. Um, somebody wants to know if you can freeze fresh rhubarb. If you freeze it? Yeah. yeah. Would you be able to freeze it and preserve it to use later? How does that work? Is it, does it make, make, cause any issues? Uh, I've never tried that because basically I like things when they're fresh from the garden. I don't like rhubarb for Christmas. <laughs> I don't like strawberries for Christmas. So it makes rhubarb. sense. So um, I, I bet you can freeze it. Maybe maybe the compote once that is made, maybe you can freeze that for uh, later use. I don't know. Uh, All right. uh, if okay. anybody else has any questions, feel free to submit them on the Q and A function on the bottom or in the chat, and I'll chime back in and make sure to ask any questions anyone might have. Back to you guys. Yes, okay. It's, it's actually a good idea that idea to, to freeze the compote for for later use. I mean, when I take the rhubarb, rhubarb I um, usually put it in a, in a, what, 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 what do you call those bags we have, Daniel? Daniel? Um, Ziploc bags? No. Daniel! Now, where did he go? He left. Oh. <laughs> Just when you need it. Well, he'll be back. So we'll ask him when he comes back. No, oh, I have to show you the Oh, okay. I'll keep chopping away. Yeah, I'm looking for this bag. Don't go away. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a plastic bag, but it's totally uh, I don't know if you can see that. It has little holes. Uh, in it. It's perforated. Okay. It's perforated. So I don't know how well that's going to show on the camera here, but uh, so what do the little holes do, Countess? They they keep the. Uh, they, 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 they air it, so the oxygen keeps uh, uh, keeps it fresh. Okay. And and, and it, it keeps it from molding or I see or whatever. So when you pick it fresh, then you put these rhubarb sticks yeah, in the bag, in and then put them in the refrigerator this way, and they yeah. last longer. Yes. I see. Yes. Okay. And this has to come up. All right. You have to do so, this right. When, gotcha. you, when you cook for me, you have to do everything <laughs> right. Smile. <laughs> well, I, I don't do that. I don't do everything. Right? Well, that's okay. I'll do the smiling part. Okay, you do the smiling and you do the cutting just totally. How, how does it look? Uh, it's getting there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, this is messy. That's messy. Okay, no, so we don't want that. Messy. All right. So we're gonna. How's this one? Is this one okay? No. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> oh, she's going to clean it up. We're not going to compost that just yet, at least not the whole thing. So it looks like we have about three cups, maybe four cups of rhubarb here cut up so far. Does that look like that's about the right amount for this recipe? Yeah. Okay. Now, once all the rhubarb is properly trimmed and shaved and chopped, what's the next step, Countess? Now we get into the exciting part. Oh, okay. Well, don't go anywhere. It's going to get exciting here. <laughs> anyway, this bottom part, of course, we want to clean it well because that's where my some soil might be there and, and uh, you know. And then people will say yucky instead of yummy. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't want we don't want to provoke any yucky mess. Okay. So I have so a few more questions from the audience, if that's okay. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, first question is, what time of year would you plant rhubarb? Well, rhubarb is a perennial, so it will come back year after year. Uh, you can actually uh, plant it in the, uh, the spring and then it will um, grow throughout the year and it will overwinter and then the following spring it will come back and it'll just keep coming back. It's, rhubarb is primarily harvested during the springtime, uh, so it's not much use during the summertime. It gets uh, stringy and bitter and, and so forth. So that looks like to me it'd be about four cups of uh, chopped rhubarb. Is that about right? Okay. I think for, for, for one pie, it should be enough. Okay, so what's the next step, Countess? Okay, now we have to, uh, we have to. Uh, Can I make some lemon juice? No. No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now, we put things in the pot. All right. This goes in the pot. So are we working on the sauce now? Cloves. Cloves, okay. Real cloves. So that's about a half a teaspoon, it looks like. Uh, so that's maybe a dozen cloves. Yeah, I mean, I usually pick the big ones because they are easier to remove afterwards because nobody wants to get these stuck in their jam shells. Right, so. But they do these, taste lovely. So these are whole cloves. Yes. Uh, not the clove powder. No. And uh, this is actually 100% organic. Uh, M and B spices in glass. Oh, we put the uh, we put the uh, cinnamon. Cinnamon. Okay, so we're again we're, using, we're actually using a real cinnamon stick. Yeah, and they they are easily removed afterwards. Now cinnamon actually is a tree, so um, that's why it looks like a stick. That we're shaving the uh, part of the tree off, the, really the bark of the tree, to create the cinnamon. And then what we're used to seeing is the actual cinnamon stick that's been ground into a powder. But uh, so we have two whole cinnamon sticks in here, about a dozen cloves, uh, which may be about um, almost a teaspoon of whole cloves. And then uh, looks like we're working on lemons here. And uh, you're peeling the lemon, Countess? Is that going to be? Goes, the... That goes into the into the cooking. So you're, you're actually going to be using the zest of the lemon? Yes. yes. Oh, okay, good. Yes. So and then Daniel, our, our assistant, he's going to try to choose this lemon that's already... Okay. That goes into the cooking. So that's about three quarters of the lemon uh, peel. Well, I, I, I peel the whole lemon except that okay. I'm clumsy fingers. Okay. So uh, it breaks before it is the whole thing. But it should be the whole lemon. Some people are better. There's also, I think there's tools for doing this. I there think. is, yeah. You can get a grater and you can actually grate. No, 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 no. You're not cheating here. Okay. You're doing exactly this, but with a proper tool. So you can do that. Okay. And we need uh, two lemons, too. All right. Oh. The zest of just one lemon and the juice of two lemons. Yes. Okay. Now, we put, I don't know how, what to tell them how much more that you put in there, but really very little. Like that's, that's already enough. Okay, so that's about a half a cup. 
of water that's going into the pot. So, so far we have one teaspoon of whole cloves, we have two cinnamon sticks in the pot, and we have the zest of one lemon in the pot. Put that on the fire. Okay, we're going to go ahead and switch this over to the fire now. And don't forget the lid because we're steaming these now. Okay, we're steaming. Yes. And uh, um, you can use the sweetener of your choice. You can use real sugar. Some people, they, they think sugar is a product from the level. So um, <laughs> some people, they use stevia. Stevia is perfectly okay. And, and this is perfectly good. Okay, so this is um, Madhava organic raw amber agave. This is 100% uh, organic. Yeah. Now, and, uh, this is on the high plane. Yeah. How's that the uh that we put in here? It's gonna be really easy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. More flame? Yes. All right, we'll crank it up. Well, there we go. All right, that's full blast. We're yeah. going to so afterburners we, on the flame. We put here. all of this in at once and the and the lid on tight and uh and it it gets, it gets steamed and it loses it, it, it uses all its flavors and all its vitamins. Nothing gets lost. Okay. So then we're going to add the lemon juice later. and the rhubarb later to the pot on the stove. No, first we add the rhubarb. Okay. And the lemon juice and the sugar comes in there. Lemon juice goes in last. Yes. Okay. Good. And how long do we let the uh, the water and the cloves and the uh, lemon zest? Steam. <laughs> when it's steaming, the things go in. Okay, so it's time. Don't remove the lid because we need the steam. Okay. Okay. Now, and the rubber closes in. Okay. All at once. All right. Off we go. Like this. There we go. All right. Now, how long do we steam the rhubarb for? Um, not too long. It, okay. It, it, it should still be in, in pieces, sort of. Okay. But it goes very quickly. A rhubarb cooks very little. So very, we're just very quickly. Are we just blanching the rhubarb then? I don't know what the blanch is. Um, that's kind of a quick cook. It's a short cook. Not a we're doing steaming. Steaming. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. And then, at what point do we add the lemon juice? Uh, we, we we kind of have to feel when it's. Done almost, and then okay. the lemon goes in. And then also, um, uh, we want to put some starch with it. Okay. To make a nice, uh, a nice sauce, uh, like a um, yeah, for, gravy for the curry. Oh, okay. I mean, what I really like is uh, what's the cheese for down there? Um, uh, the cheese, the sweet cheese that they make. Uh, Oh, the panna or? No, it's, it's another one. I can't think of the name right now. So the lemon juice and the cornstarch go in last. Is that right? No, the cornstarch goes in really swiftly now. Okay. Now, cornstarch, always, always mix it with cold water. Mm -hmm. Never, ever with hot because then you get lumps right away. And you can put this into any cooking. That's a good tip, Countess. But but when it's in, uh, when you when you put it into the hot uh, cooking rhubarb, you get nothing but lumps. Mm -hmm. and, and cold is perfect. And so that's about. Um looks like about a quarter of a cup of water that you've added to the cornstarch. And how much cornstarch did you put in there? One spoon. Okay, so about one rounded tablespoon of cornstarch. Is that a cornstarch? Yeah. Oh, no, don't do too much. Not too much, okay. I think you need like a wooden spoon. Okay. Now we can put this in. So here's the wooden spoon. Mm -hmm. And are we stirring this up? Mm -hmm. uh, lid on, lid on, lid on. 
Okay. Mascarpone. Mascarpone, yeah. So we have the Mascarpone flame. would be a terrific base for a rhubarb pie, the best. We'll have to do that next time. Yes. <laughs> that sounds good. Yes. So we've got the flame on high on here. We want to create a lot of steam. Yes. Uh -huh. And we want to cook it fast. Yes. But not too long. No. Um, I can put a twig of, uh, of um, fresh um, mint? mint in there. Uh huh. Okay. But don't leave that in there because the mint leaves, they get kind of blackish and floppy, and then they are the ugly and then they say yuck again. And how many mint leaves are we going to put in here? Oh, not just two twigs. Oh, the whole twigs, okay. Yeah. Oh, that looks nice. But they'll have to be removed afterwards. Don't worry, we'll show that a little close up to the camera in just a minute. Mm -hmm. And so, um, about how long do we steam the rhubarb? Uh, no, there's a lemon. Yeah. Put that in. It's ready to go in? Okay. So we've been steaming now for about uh, five minutes and we're going to add the lemon juice. And then uh, we're going to keep the lid on so that we keep the steam in. We can put some of this in already. Okay. So we're going to add a little sweetener. How much of the agave are we going to add, Countess? <laughs> okay. She's going to tell me when to stop. Let's put it in. Put it in. Put it in. More? Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's about uh, two, maybe three tablespoons of agave that we just added. So we're going to make it, uh, this is kind of a sweet dish. Of course, we are making a rhubarb compote. It's going to go in a pie crust. And uh, she's stirring it up, and uh, I see the mint leaves are getting a little bit wilted. Brian, agave to taste. Agave to taste. Good point. Thank you, Daniel. Put the leaf on. Okay. And uh, so now we've added the lemon juice, and mm -hmm. we've added the agave, we've added a couple of sprigs of mint, mm -hmm. and uh, that mint came fresh out of the garden, mm -hmm. the Countess's garden too. And then out from the outside there, there's a lot of mint. You make iced tea with that. Very nice. My yeah. iced tea is famous. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we need that recipe too. We're definitely yes. going to have to do that in a future episode. So we got them all lined up here. By the way, these cooking with We used uh, organic uh, cornstarch, by the way. Organic, okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Everything's organic here. <laughs> We've got a uh, whole line of, of cooking with the Countess classes. This will be held on the first Thursday of every month. And so uh, we'll figure out what we're gonna do in July. Ice tea might be a good idea, or the proper way to chop fruit, seasonal fruit. So we'll stay tuned. We'll let you know what's coming up in July. Uh, Brian, we have a few more questions. Yeah, go ahead. Um, first, can we pan up the cameras so we can see you guys while we answer these questions? Yeah, sure. Um, and the first one was, um, can rhubarb be savory? See what? Well, yeah, um, it's not really savory by itself. So rhubarb is kind of sweet and sour. It's very sour, but lemon has the, the quality of when you drink lemon, it's sour, but it, it's alkalized in the body. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you, if you want to alkalize your body, you drink lemon juice, but, but not lemon juice out of, out of a can. You have to use the fresh lemon juice. And it has sort of the same function with the, with the um, rhubarb. It's very, very, very sour. Mm -hmm. And the lemon neutralizes that somehow, mm -hmm. but it makes it just very tasty. And uh, the, the, the agave syrup um, adds the sweetness. If you use plain, plain sugar, it kind of makes it taste fluffy. No, don't use sugar. No. And, and that's the, the yeah. So nice the, the, the sweetening of your choice. So it would be uh, raw agave, or it could be maple syrup, it could be honey, uh, it could be stevia, if stevia. you're into that sort of thing. So how are we doing over here on the stove, Countess? Are we ready? Or does it need more time? No, it's probably done by now. Okay. Yes, it's done. All right. Done. Can the off, then? All right, let's bring this over to the camera so people can, we can show people what it looks like. 
Mm -hmm. See, you can still see pieces, but they're soft and mm -hmm. should be good. delicious. And camera down a little bit. Okay. So this is what we have. Uh, we have the mint is in there, and we have the lemon zest, and we have rhubarb, the cornstarch, the right. clove. Now uh, you can make a regular pie crust that you can buy, or if you're good at making pie crusts, I, I, I know I know some good to make that with pie crust, and then you fill that in the pie crust, or uh, you make little pies like that, you know, which is very nice. Now, you, you can also oh, just... You can, you can fill these kind of things. It's very, very nice. And that I have never thought of for. This is nice for a, for a lunch party or a dinner party. And you put, put the vanilla sauce for it. Mm -hmm. And you can also just let this cool and you can just put it in a bowl and eat it. Uh, you don't necessarily... Oh, yeah, yeah. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really, really delicious. It's It's really super simple, easy to make. And you know, it, it gives you some ideas what to do with rhubarb. You know, rhubarb is uh, a very, very old vegetable. It's been around for you know since the beginning of time, but most people don't know what to do with it. The vitamin K is very important because most most uh, 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 men are brainwashed by the by the FDA mafia. <laughs> and they have to take blood thinners for to to prevent a um, stroke or all these things. And blood thinners is vitamin K. And, and tell us how you really feel about it, Countess. And uh, that's how I feel about it, that this is a natural way. And, and, and the, the, the medicine that you get pushed on, that, that, that just ends in the hospital. That's Absolutely. Somebody really famous once said, let food be thy medicine. And medicine be thy food. Yes. That was Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, said that to 2,500 years ago. Yeah. So now we're going to make a vanilla sauce to go with the rhubarb compote. Yes. And uh, how do we do that, Countess? Oh, well, we have a pot here. And um, now um, there are some soft ones. Um, these, these are um, vanilla beans, real vanilla beans. Vanilla is, a, is an orchid. And, and uh, I'm trying to cut it, but it's still on the end. Schneider. There we go. Okay. So we're not using vanilla extract today. Um, oh, most... no, no. Stay away from things like that. Yeah. <laughs> So vanilla extract or the liquid most often comes in alcohol, yeah. but uh, you can get alcohol free vanilla extract, but uh, really it's best to stay with the whole food as much as possible. So this is what the vanilla bean actually looks like. So you so have the to- vanilla, vanilla bean has the seeds which go into here. Right. And then, and then once you scrape the seeds out, then you put the whole bean in there and cook it with the, with the milk. Now, um, uh, we, we don't want to use cow's milk because cow's milk belongs to a calf. <laughs> and we are pretty uncalf. We, we don't want to steal calf's milk. No, we really don't. And also, the way things go nowadays, um, any animal product has so much estrogen, artificial estrogen, like eggs and all, they put everything in gross hormones into everything. Yeah, growth hormones, antibiotics. Uh, yeah, there's... antibiotic stress, um, other stress medicine, like the tranquilizers, and this poor animal says, oh, the stress. Now, this whole being. Goes into there. So we're slicing the vanilla bean longitudinally, mm -hmm. long ways, to, yeah. and then we're scraping the seeds out yes. and putting the seeds in the pot. And then we're adding the entire pod, the entire seed pod of the vanilla bean. Is that right? Yes. Okay. There we go. Okay. 
So we're making the vanilla sauce now that goes as a companion with the rhubarb compote. Now well, we're going to add some almond milk. Almond milk. Uh, there's a way of making almond milk. So you can buy it, but this is much better than the one that we can buy. Okay. So uh, we actually make our own almond milk here yeah. at Port of Missing Men. And uh, that's really easy to do. You just soak the almonds and then you peel them and you put them in a blender with some water and you make a uh, almond smoothie. And then you strain it through a nut milk bag or you can run it through an angel juicer to get the almond. Well, I put about a spoonful of, uh, again, okay. organic uh, parts. And this is cold, so that's okay. Okay. So that's about a rounded tablespoon of the organic cornstarch. Where is my uh, whisk? Uh, the whisk is right here. This one? Okay. We have this one? No. Okay. Dangerous. <laughs> so we have two vanilla beans. And we have about a rounded tablespoon of organic cornstarch, and we have about two cups of almond milk. Now, could you also use soy milk, or could you use hemp milk? No, or? soy is not good. Soy is bad which for the thyroid. Okay. Gotcha. Any, anybody who doesn't want soy, uh, thyroid problems, avoid everything soy. That's good information, Countess. Thank you. Yes. So the Countess is a bit of a health nut. In fact, we both are. So we share that in common, and uh, we want to try to live as long as we can and live as healthy as we can. Now again, we have to put one of those pieces of artwork in there, which I'm not so good at. But this one is better. But we don't need uh, lemon juice anymore. Okay, so we're just adding some lemon zest? Yes. All right. This one came out just fine. You're doing a great job, Countess. Right? <laughs> so we're doing the best of warm money. Um, uh, Daniel, if you want to make more juice, we can throw it in there. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to add the juice of one lemon. No, no, not in here. No lemon juice in here. Oh, all right. But that's for, oh, fine. that's for the rhubarb. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So now, are you putting this on the stove? I'm putting this on the stove. Okay. Because it's a corn stove, isn't it? It's very creamy. And uh, I need a. Do we want a high flow in there or? Um, not too high. Okay. So we're, we're just going to have a medium flame. Okay. No, I need, I like the wooden stove. It's the middle one that is not. Just make a little. Yeah. Yes. No. Okay. And how long are we cooking for here, Countess? Well, we want this nice and thick and creamy. Okay. So maybe five, ten minutes? Well, for the time that the cornstarch will stick. Uh huh. Okay. I mean, of course, uh, if you are a professional sinner, you make whipped cream and dollop that on top of the pie, which is, of course. Well, we're not going to do that today. We're not going to do that today, right? Right, okay. But uh, vanilla sauce is actually the classical. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just to recap here with the vanilla sauce, we have about two cups of almond milk and we have the two vanilla beans that have been scraped and, and peeled. And then we have the zest of one lemon. And we have about uh, one rounded tablespoon of cornstarch. And that's gonna be kind of like the topping that's gonna go on to the uh, and this is getting thick. It's pretty quick. Yeah, so. Lots of different kind of. So it looks like it only is going to take about five minutes on a medium flame on the stove here. Well, 
And then we'll go find the seaweed. Now, this is something that you Pardon want. Doesn't mean you can serve it in this is pretty. Okay. Here, let's show that in front of the camera here so that yeah. we can see it. There's all kind of different things that you can serve it in. Now, this vanilla sauce is the kind of thing that we need to stir constantly while it's on the stove. Uh, so it doesn't, so it doesn't burn. Yeah, because otherwise, and and this still needs the uh, uh, sugar. It's, okay. It's fine. It's, it's, it's good. It's, it's cooking. Okay. Is it ready? And uh, we're going to use the sweetener of our choice again. Well, we can put the. Uh, okay. And that's done. So that took just about five minutes on the stove for the vanilla sauce. And uh, it looks like you're scraping the sides a little bit. Yes, you don't, you don't want any rest in it. Okay. So the only thing that has to be, that has to be removed from here later is the small beans. Let's bring this over here to the camera so people can see mm -hmm. what we're doing. Okay. So here is what the vanilla sauce looks like. And uh, we're actually going to pick the vanilla beans out of here like this. Uh, that doesn't need to stay. Well, 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 don't lose any sauce by doing that. Okay. <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay. And uh, I imagine we're probably going to want to take the yeah, we take that out. the lemon rind out as yeah. well. Yeah. I'll be sure not to lose the sauce. It's good. Whoops. <laughs> well, that's what I get for taking my eyes off the job here. Here we go. Okay. So now we have a nice vanilla sauce that can be used kind of like a, a whipped cream sort of topping on your rhubarb compote. Um, and the rhubarb compote now has um, cooled just enough, probably, that you could actually serve it um, right out in a bowl, or you can, you know, put it inside of a yeah. micro. Okay, so Countess, now that we have the rhubarb compote and we have the vanilla sauce, are we going to put it in one of these no, custard we're not, we're not going to. Okay. We're going to put it in a, in a pitcher. No, okay. get one of those pictures because you you don't want to be portion that. Oh, that's gonna be hot, isn't it? I guess. Oh, we didn't have the agave. We've got to have the agave, don't we? Did you put any in? No. How much agave should we put in? Until it's sweet enough. Okay. Let's add some agave. And you say when. Four? Mm, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Good? Okay. So that looked to be about a half a cup of agave that we've added. Maybe then, a quarter, maybe a third of a cup. This is a little bit of an experiment because maybe cow's milk is sweeter than almond milk. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, I have to taste this. Did you have a spoon here? Uh, no, uh, not yet. How are we doing on time, uh, Connor? Uh, we're 40 minutes in. So okay, good. All right. I want to be sensitive to everybody's schedule here today. Now, what are we doing with the vanilla beans, Countess? I'm scraping them off. Oh, okay. I don't want messy vanilla beans in the compost. I see. Okay. So we're saving a little bit of the uh, vanilla sauce. Uh, and we're just adding that to the rhubarb compost. We don't want to squander uh, vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. This is fun. Cooking with a countess is fun. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, 
You need a towel? Oh, you have a towel. Okay. I'm not too overly impressed with our vanilla sauce. Well, let's try the taste test again, see how it tastes now. Are we getting close? The cow's milk probably tastes rich than this. Well, we don't want to steal the calf's milk. Any, uh, yes, well, you grab a spoon for yourself and we'll okay. try this. Okay. All right, so many times, you know, a, a taste test is called for. Daniel, you want to taste it too? Mmm. Oh, that's delicious. Is it good? Countess, you are really good in the kitchen. <laughs> you folks have no idea how good that tastes. A little bit more. Tilt it up a little higher. A little bit more. Even higher. Daniel, there we go. you are good. an expert. I want you to taste this too. Mm. That is really rich. Oh, and, and, oh and you get the almond problem? It's, it's amazing. Oh, it, it, it really tastes like heavy whipped cream. It, it's yeah. actually amazing. Yeah. It's not bad at all. Okay. So that is amazing. You could use this in a lot of recipes, couldn't you? Well, I do. Do you? What else do you use? I it? use it with, when I make uh, water quicks in, 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 in the winter. Uh -huh. for, for, what, what's New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. For Sylvester. Yeah. I, I could see actually um, adding this to a dessert or you could add this to uh, much when, chocolate or yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also I, I have a lot of German friends that are very good at our first books. I mean, the Germans have to be found. Yeah. And, uh, and, and always when I'm invited, they always say, don't forget the vanilla sauce. <laughs> I don't blame Whatever them. Whatever they make, uh, dessert, the vanilla sauce goes. That was amazing. That was for the health conscious, also, as fresh fruit comes into season, this is beautiful. Right. Made over a bowl of chopped fresh berries. Yeah. Anything yeah. that comes into a season, this is a really nice dressing without the, the guilt. Good, good point. That was awesome. So that was almond milk, and that was cornstarch, and that was vanilla bean, and the zest of one whole lemon. And that, folks, I got to tell you, that really tastes amazing. So I can see that uh, we could actually take this root bar. Now, what are these bowls here for? Tasting. Oh, for tasting. tasting. Okay. But would you want to taste that? Okay. The, the mess that we made there. <laughs> well, it, it looks like that. So so we don't have any spoons left. Yeah. I don't know about poison. Yeah, I still don't know for that. Well, I mean, the servings. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, one of those would work. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's better. So then um, I'm putting a little bit of the rhubarb compote into a bowl, and then do I just top it with this vanilla sauce? No, because you probably, not. well, if you want to eat the rhubarb compote, then you know. I was thinking of rhubarb pie. Uh-huh. This can almost need a little bit more um, cornstarch. Time-wise now, though, that can, you could try it this way, and then if they want to make a pie, they just they have the basics now. Yeah, mm. this, this can this can make a little bit more more corn stuff. That was delicious. This this is really good. So the corn starch we thicken it up a little bit yes. more. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to add a little bit of this vanilla sauce here to my rhubarb compote. And would you like to try some, Countess? Sure. Okay. I'm going to prepare a bowl here for the Countess. I always like. Them. <laughs> I can see why. You're an amazing chef, Countess. This is incredible. As long as I have somebody who does the smiling. I'm the kind of well, person who slows the thing. At least I'm good for something. Here we go. <clears throat> mm -hmm. mm. It's like dessert. It's, it's amazing. Dessert. Yeah, that's incredible. It's really not bad. I mean, mm -hmm. I really that's generally don't like to break myself, but <laughs> she's being modest here. It's very good. 
Brian, I'm, I'm glad to hear everything's turned out good there. Um, we have a few more questions from the audience. Um, I wish okay. that I could taste somehow, but I unfortunately can't reach to the computer. <laughs> have them come over, tell them where we are. <laughs> um, Go. But uh, a few more questions from the audience. We had somebody ask if, um, can rhubarb be used in any sort of jellies or preserves? Absolutely, yes, yeah. absolutely. So that, you know, and then the actual making of the jelly would be similar to what we just did. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, only you would can it, obviously, if you're going to uh, be keeping it for the winter. Um, you don't necessarily have to can it if you're just going to be using it within a, you know, a few weeks. And you use gelatin instead of um, yeah. cornstarch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you like it. Mm -hmm. anyway, we had another question about uh, the rhubarb plant. Um, someone was asking, um, why are the leaves toxic? Um, and can they give you a rash or anything like that? Or that's, that's a really good question. So the leaves have something in them called oxalic acid, uh, but you would have to eat some 30 pounds of rhubarb leaves in order for it to actually be a problem for you. Uh, there's no oxalic acid or, or very, very little in the stem of the rhubarb, so that's the part that we eat. Um, so I, I, even if you were to eat a little bit of the leaf of the rhubarb, it's not going to hurt you. You know, you would have to eat a massive quantity for it to accumulate to a point where it's going to be, uh, and, and it would irritate you. Your body. But you would really don't want to eat it because it doesn't taste good. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's very bitter. It really doesn't. Yeah. And and we just break them up and they go in the compost. But the the stem of the rhubarb is amazing, especially when it's made. And the rhubarb plant is very pretty, and um, they love coming the water. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it grows well in rich, fertile soil. Mm -hmm. But you need a good cold winter for the plant to actually develop well and to taste sweet. And so we, we have somebody else here, um, their name, Anna Goodenough, saying, uh, in reference when you were talking about future recipes and programs, saying, please, please, can we have the iced tea recipe? It is wonderful, a childhood memory. This is asking Anna Goodenough. Oh. They're doing it then in England. Uh, and, and, and that's her asking? Yeah. yeah. Hi. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today, nice. Anna. I appreciate you joining us. I'm glad you enjoyed the. Anna was here when she was at uh, I mean, uh, Lulu's age. Oh, okay. Ago, and I had a cook. And this cook, I don't know, she was a cook by the grace of God. <laughs> and she made it. She made it. Spinach soup was spinach from the garden. She'd never done that in her life before, and it was absolutely horrendous. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> wow. And I, I know a little as she was, she caught that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, well, we'll certainly take put that on the schedule to do uh, the Countess's special iced tea, and uh, I I don't know if we're going to do that in July, but uh, it will be coming up. Um, we're going to be repeating these shows the first Thursday of every month. I don't, I don't want to give this secret to everybody what kind of tea I use, but since the Brits know more about tea than I do, um, you can show them one. But that's a secret now. Don't, that's not for public consumption. <laughs> okay. So we're going to have to use but the for, uh, it, it's only It's for Anna exclusively. So we're going to have to use the Dome of Silence for this sure, part? Sure, sure. All right, so. It's cold brewed. So this is Twining's, Twinings. Cold Brewed Iced Tea. It's called English Classic. Yeah, and it's cold brewed. So you don't have to cook anything and mess around it or does it by, by itself. The only thing you have to put in is uh, uh, for, uh, for I, uh, one pot of iced tea, I put two lemons juiced. And when I when I juice them, I just cut on one slice and put one whole slice in the slice in the bowl, and two limes if you have also sliced, and a lot a lot of mint, and uh, mint grows here in the flower bed, and it's really really nice. This is sweet mint. It's not spearmint or any kind of us medicinal uh, junk. This is sweet mint. It's delicious. Uh huh. And you can't put too much of that in there. And I always put one in a glass, like this, that likes a lot of water in there. And this, this is already a recall, so you know, mm -hmm. 
And then you have that handy and every glass with ice cubes, you put one little tip into the glass, which is kind of a nice touch. That sounds like the perfect beverage for summertime here in Southampton. So we'll definitely have to put that on the schedule for July or August. Yes. And we'll actually demonstrate that. But we really don't want all America do it my way. Right. They can come here if they want to use an iced tea. Okay. <laughs> I don't want anybody to go, go from Zion with my, with my iced tea. So for those of, different. She's different. For those of you that don't know, the Countess is not only amazing in the kitchen, but she also knows a lot about gardening. And so she has an amazing organic garden here. And she knows a lot about nature and plants as well. So we're very grateful to have her uh, contributing here to the Southampton Historical Museum's educational program here. And uh, we are looking forward to seeing you next time. Do we have any other questions today, Connor? No, we're, we're, we're fresh out of questions. And I just want to thank you and Mrs. Song again for all the help and doing this great program. Um, it was really fun to watch. I'm sure everybody watching enjoyed. Um, and hopefully everybody watching later on YouTube will enjoy it as well. Um, we want to remind everybody, go to our website, southamptonhistory.org, to find out all of our information about future programming, the next Cooking with the Countess program, and anything else you might need, need to know about any local history. Um, so well, I know bring your whole family, you can all stay in the pool house again. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. really love you guys, and your sons are so nice, and you are such a darling. <laughs> Seriously. Well, again, thank you, Mrs. Som. Thanks, Brian. And we'll see everybody next time. You're welcome, Connor. And thank you all for joining us today. And it was fun. And we look forward to our next show. Okay, bye-bye. Yep. Have a good day, bye. everybody. Thank you. Bye.